Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading. Week of May 10th weekend video. Telling you this is going to be short. I want everybody to be able to have time for Mother's Day and not let me interrupt your dinner. But I just want to show you, similar to what we have now, have there ever been other periods that were this parabolic? And what were the warning signs? So let's go into it so you know what I'm talking about. First things first, earnings this week. We still have to have a short-term time frame. Remember, at the moment, day trade short, day trade long till proven otherwise. After the close tomorrow, Novavax. That'll be an interesting one on the upper left. Uh, the other ones I'm watching, Win Resorts. Then on Tuesday, you got Palantir, you got IGT, Scrodinger, Fubo TV after the close. But you're getting near the end of the earnings period. Just keep that in mind in there. This is what I want to show you because I think it's interesting. The two biggest charts, the two biggest charts, I already posted on the Twitter feed, and I'll show you this way. This, to me, is the two biggest charts I want you to watch, and this is what I'm watching. I'm trading also. The potential head and shoulders in the bonds, and the potential breakout of the BCOM. As you see, those are monthly charts. The reason I'm showing it on here is because I can't fit everything unless I just erase everything, and I'll show you on here. So we'll just take two of them. Just forget about the moving averages at the moment. On the left is the bonds, and this is the bonds on a monthly chart. On the right, is the Bloomberg Commodity Index. You could put the DBA, any of these, but as you see, it's getting friggin' parabolic. And I'm sick of hearing the Fed say this is transitory. Maybe right here is transitory, but holy cow, look at that, that's 50%. As you see, they correlated pretty well. This is what I'm going to be watching. Is this gonna break? Now, you might say it's oversold, you're right. When it was oversold back here in 2017, it took months for it to work off the oversold and go back to the zero line before the next leg down. And that's exactly what I want to show you with the SPX after I show you this. So if this just futzes around for months and gets back near the zero line, then it'll have enough ammunition to plow down to here. That's 20 more points. Keep in mind the Bloomberg Commodity Index just, you'll see. So when it started up here, up here, as you see my arrow, at 131, it started going down in, in 2014, guess what? Yeah, the indexes went straight, uh, the bonds went straight up. So just keep that in mind. I think this Bloomberg Commodity Index is a big deal. As you see right now, it's where it was in May of 2018, May, June. In May, June of 2018, the bonds were way down here. I do think inflation matters. I am in awe how fast this has gone and how the Fed completely doesn't believe this. That's up over two over a hundred percent. That just doesn't seem transitory to me. Even crude oil. I mean, that's a big old move. I'm just telling you, when I watch these indexes, and I know we're in DBA way down here. I just think it's full of it to sit here and still stimulate. I thought one of their mandates is to prevent inflation. You know, you can change the bar of where inflation is, but the bonds will know. And the bonds, if they break down and go to here, it will start affecting this. That's the SPX. Right now, this is a huge divergence to watch the bonds. Now, I know their economy is reopening and all that, but just keep in mind that we're almost 50% higher than when the virus hit. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, let's say 40%. So I guess this is just a new paradigm. The thing is, this is parabolic. There's no doubt in my mind this is parabolic. This is overbought, the SPX on the upper uh, right, on the bottom right. And I'm going to show you a couple of other charts. But to see this go down this much and this go up this much is extremely dangerous. Plus, with the Bloomberg Commodity Index going up. 
I think input costs are going to make a difference. It's just nobody cares yet. This is the next thing I want to show you. Remember, overall market perspective to me, I think is the biggest deal in the world. This is the next thing I want to show you. SPX, you see the parabolic move. You see the overbought. I can't stress enough the overbought MACD on the bottom. You put a weekly chart, yep, way overbought. But there's a reason I'm showing you this. You go back and back and back. And the SPX is about as overbought as it's been. I mean, almost ever. Look at that. That's incredible. So if you go back to 2000, because that's a lot of people's benchmarks, and you go to where it was at the top, it was here at 72. 72, the, or, uh, the MACD. Now, it's at 400. Yes, that's amazing. Remember, down here, they're scaling it to wherever it was. Just go back to 1929. Guess what? Yeah, that's when it started, so it's hard to tell. That was the last time that it's been this parabolic. I know that's almost freaky. So if you go over here and you go to 1970, the nifty, all that, see this up? That was 10. And uh, now, 400. Uh, that's what you call overbought. I like to measure what's going on now against 2000 with a dot com and 1929. How could you have seen this coming? Well, first thing, you had a reversal candle up here. I drew that line for a dark cloud cover after a big green candle. Here, trend line. And then I'll show it on a weekly chart to you. Go all the way in here, all the way, even in the 60s. Dark cloud cover. How about trend line? 1987 uh, trend line. So now I'm going to show you on a weekly chart. And I think you'll see what I'm talking about. I just think this is really important because what everybody's missing is you might have thought it was parabolic here, but there was a boatload of money to be made on the long side on the parabolic move. Yep, that looks like the SPX now. What happened first? Trend lines. You had a trend, li a trend line here. You had a trend line here. A trend line here, 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 here. You get the drift of it. Now, go to 2000. Where was the trend line? Right there, beautiful trend line. And as you see, when it broke, that was it. But there's a couple of other things interesting. And that's going back to a monthly chart. When you go to a monthly chart in 1929, you're gonna notice that when it cracked and got oversold, it needed to go all the way to overbought before you really had a, neg uh, a n nice little leg down again. I just can't stress enough on, and it's not perfect, Sorry, weekly, weekly. You went up, you had an overbought, and that was it. Oversold, you don't touch it. It gets overbought, it sort of fudged around until it broke a trend line. I'm sorry about that. I've been going over a ton of charts. Here you go. Oversold, went to overbought, right at resistance. Don't worry about moving averages or ATR trailing stop. When something breaks, you have to do that. Overbought under resistance. Go all the way to here. And we can even go to 2000. And when you go to 2000, what are you going to see? Yep. Oversold. Had to get to zero. Under the trend line. Oversold. Went to resistance. What do you have now? And you could say 2008. Guess what? Yep. There it is again. April of 2008, overbought at the resistance. So what do you have now? Now you have parabolic. So you don't have anything other than we're the most overbought I've ever seen it. So the key is you have to wait for that first reversal signal. We don't have it yet. I just want to make that clear. We don't have it. You go to a daily and go way back to 1929. And back then it was dots and dashes. You could see a mile away that head and shoulders. Yep. Very interesting. If you go to 2000, go all the way in here and go to 2000, 
And what you'll see in here is this. There you go. You have that trend line. So that's what I, that's what I'm seeing in there. The point is almost all of these had a breakdown and then a test. So I think that's incredibly important. But with this real big inflation, guess what? This is like 1974, in my opinion. That's, that's when you had the gas crisis. So what happened then? Ah, bless your heart. You had another one of those trend lines right there. Then you got overbought. That's a daily. And every time it was overbought, it got nailed. How about on a weekly chart? And I'm sorry if a lot of this video is going over historical perspectives. I think it's incredibly important, especially for like your 401k. That's 1974, and that's weekly. Yep. And you had the rally from the oversold, and that was it. Here, nice nail. Here, nice nail. Oversold, got to over zero, got nailed again. And like I'm telling you, you don't even have the oversold yet. You just have the grossly overbought. Usually what happens is this is some stocks start to turn before other ones. Now, this is the SPX. Most of the other indexes did the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to zero in. Is there any trend line that's been violated? No. Were they here? Yeah, maybe. The difference is this, and almost everyone back to 1929 did the same thing. You sold off to support, sold off, sold off, sold off, everyone on support. What happened? Sell off to support, some support. If this breaks, it has nothing till 3,900. Just keep that in mind, that's about 300 points. This is also a big deal, is that trend line. This one or this one. But for now, it's the lack of support, and it's a huge danger sign compared with, uh, uh, coupled with the inflation and the possible breakdown of bonds. So I'm really cautious, but there's always buy ideas. The deal is you have to have hedges in place. Now, what kind of hedges in place am I talking about? Well, if I'm right that you get sell-offs to support, then what you can do is find something like verticals or butterflies that take advantage of the support. Keep in mind that if it gets to here, it's going to be oversold and then it's how it works off the oversold. Ultimately, I think it goes under 400. It's just the big deal is from where. So the easiest thing to do is to go into October or September and just close your eyes and buy something that's in the money, like a 410 430 butterfly, just to have some kind of hedge. You do a vertical, you get yourself destroyed because you don't know when this is going to happen. It's like a horror movie. You know, the bad person's coming out, you just don't know when. Here's a 20 point wide that's 325. Is that a great deal? No. I would rather go to the September quarterlies and do it for like 315. So I just think that's an interesting way to do it in here. And that's what I'm thinking of doing, just to have one in my hip pocket. Now you might say, how about the QQQ? Same kind of thing, except guess what? On a four hour, that's already broken. Now it's all on how it works off that oversold. If you go to a weekly chart of the QQQ, what are you going to notice? Yep, overbought. How about on a monthly chart? Not as overbought as much as it looks like big old negative divergence. So I'm just telling you, we could do that in the Qs also. But I think it doesn't hurt to have hedges in place that aren't that expensive. Also, tight stops. So let's go into some long ideas so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Believe it or not, I waited so late. The ES is a rope up, like all of 55. I really think the momentum is up until these bonds break. So just keep that in mind. I think it's very important. Keep in mind that a lot of the stocks that had earnings 
crapped out. Yeah, they crapped out. Most of the time when Amazon has a red candle, it goes and has a sort of somewhat bear market for a while. Almost every time it has a red candle, red candle, red candle, it has a bear market. Not a red candle after a big sell-off, a red candle after a big rally. So this time where this kind of stock, sure, it could overshoot to here. It's got a lot of resistance of all these people hooked now. You can look to do neutral ideas in Amazon. Do not sell things naked. If they could declare a split, you're screwed. We look to do neutral ideas in Amazon. Neutral ideas in Apple, it's stuck in a range. Neutral ideas in Netflix. I know some are like, oh, it's breaking down. Go to a, I don't think that's a, look at that support. So I'm going to look to do neutral ideas in all of these. So very much the FANG stocks are going to look for neutral ideas. But in the meantime, you got to try to make money on the upside until proven otherwise. So on the right, I'm going to show you some of these stocks on a weekly. And I'm going to show you on a daily. And I'm going to show you some of them I like. So let's start. Shopify. Yeah, believe it or not, it's oversold. It's at support. Even on a monthly, which is tough, it's oversold. You do not want to chase the ones that are grossly overbought. This is oversold on a daily, right at support. I can't believe I'm showing a NASDAQ stock, but look at that support on the right. You just can't ignore that. Regeneron, another one trying to have support right here. Not that overbought. So if I'm going to buy a biotech, it's either going to be Regeneron or Biogen, look at that on a daily chart and on a weekly. Very interested. MongoDB, why am I showing the stock that plummeted this week? Because it's at major support for a uh, software slash service. Has it turned yet? No. But this and Shopify, at least you're at some support. Uh, I got to show Boeing. Yeah, we like Boeing back here. We like Boeing here. We like Boeing here. And guess what? Oversold on a weekly, holding support. You got to look at Boeing on the long side. iRobot, what a dog. And guess what? It's at support and oversold. INCY, looking at that, but not. I like that it's oversold on a daily. I just don't like that reversal candle, but I have to have some drugs in my portfolio, I think. Lemonade, new issue back here. Finally, at major, major support. We got to wait for the earnings, though. TerraCycle, why would I show something like this? Because it's going straight up, and if it gets over this, it has no resistance. A little overbought, it could get more overbought. The next thing, I can't stress this enough. Of all the products I, I look at, weekly, monthly, notice something about gold on a monthly chart. Darn right. Look how oversold that is. And every time it gets oversold, it has a big rally. Every time. Look at this. Now, you might say, but it, it was oversold here. Guess what? Under the ATR trailing stop. You have to have it even on a monthly. You want it oversold where the price is over the ATR trailing stop. And you get these spectacular rallies. So I like gold. I don't like that on a weekly, it's overbought. But this can futz around for a long time at that resistance. The longer it futzes, the more powerful the rally is going to be. I'm very interested in gold uh, in here. I just want to make that clear. So going back to it, gold stocks, Newmont. Look at this on a monthly chart. Uh, you got to love it. Newmont still looks good in here. So a lot of the gold stocks still look good. Look at this. They're oversold. About on a weekly. They can stay up in this area, but yeah, they're oversold. It's hard to believe they've had this rally and they're oversold. So whether it's gold, whether it's Newmont, whether it's PLG, which is also, a, uh, a, it's called like Platinum Group. AGI, another one, oversold. These are gold stocks, BITFF. Yep, look what happens if this gets over 12. We got. I want to swing trade the gold stocks. Let me give you a couple more that look pretty good. I want to go on these because they haven't been around that much. I'll go on a, a daily. Well, I could go on a weekly and a daily. 
Wrap. Sure looks like a bull flag to me. It's worked off. It's overbought beautifully. You know I like wrap. SRNE. Why would I show that? Because it's oversold at support. And this has a lot of bang for the buck if it starts going up. KLDO. Another one. Oversold and add a lot of support. Another one that has a lot of bang for the buck. Believe it or not, Ballard Power. Did it look like dirt on a weekly? It sure does. But there's one thing everybody's missing. It's that major support, major support. So I'm looking for a better reversal candle than that to lean swing long Ballard Power. Remember, that could go up even if markets go down. CGC, a forgotten stock. Yep. After all this excitement, it's now almost down to major support. I think it's exciting in there. On the other hand, it does have earnings at uh, the end of May, but they're finally down to support levels. How about Tilray? Yep. How can you not look at this? Everybody loved it when it was like 50. And look at that. Look how close it is to major support. I'm actually liking the pot stocks again. There's a risk reward profile and they're there. So just keep that in mind in there of what I'm watching. CYME, I showed this one because it's oversold on a daily. If it starts turning, it could go a lot higher. So I think these are a lot of good ideas for you. Keep in mind trend lines. If you see something that has a trend line like this, where it gaps down and then forms another bear flag, and then it rallies back to it, you can play them all the way down. We'll have to see those happen and we can jump on the direction, not the price. Only care about the direction. Have a great day. Talk to you later.